Let's now take a look at a tone-specific parameter, WG, Wave Generator, on F2. Now, I've initialized this patch, so everything's working from scratch. A basic piano waveform. Let's take a look at these parameters. Well, that's the wave group. Two groups, internal A, internal B, with 255 waveforms to choose from in bank A and 193 in B. And as I said earlier, the B bank tends to be the rhythmic sounds, the percussion sounds. So I can select my wave from a list. And just as before, I can use the sound list to view the waveforms. OK. Let's just return that to the basic waveform number one. I also have a booster here, Wave Gain. I can whack this right up, plus 12 dBs, which is really handy when creating distortion sounds, because I can boost the signal before I put it through the booster section in the tone structure, giving me lots of distortion. Over here, we have a feature called FXM. This is a little bit like ring modulation, frequency cross-modulation, it's called. And it can help you create dirty sounds with lots of weird enharmonic overtones. And then down here, we can specify a tone delay. Imagine the situation where you've created a patch using four different tones. You can specify a delay time for any of those tones, so that when you play a note, you get maybe tone number one. And then 50 milliseconds later, you get tone number two. So that's tone delay. OK. Well, over here, we can look at some pitch parameters, coarse tune, fine tune, random pitch depth. This is quite nice. It means that every time we play a note on the keyboard, we can get a slightly different tuning from it. Pitch envelope. Well, this is interesting. Now, let's just go over here and increase this to maximum. This is the envelope depth, and this is the amount that the envelope that's displayed here will control the pitch. And I can generate from here, as is shown on the graphical display, a pitch envelope which means when I play the note, it will follow the contours generated in the display. Let's increase the, the pitch level and the time. Play the note. You can hear that every time it's triggered, the pitch contour is followed. So it rises smoothly and then drops to a steady state pitch. And this is really handy for certain sounds like this one here, which is user 21. If you take a listen, four tones are used here, but each tone rises or moves down from the transient, giving a very interesting note on sound. If we listen to each of those tones independently, using the tone switch, you can hear that one rises, that one falls, and that one's static. It's often useful on certain woodwind instruments because when the notes are played, often you get a pitch drop or a pitch rise on the transient of the note. So that's the pitch angle.